we will simulate an interesting problem called random walk. Uh, in a two dimension, it goes like this. Uh, let's say we have a person here and the person is drunk. Uh, so he don't know uh, where he is, where he is going, where he came from. Okay, so he don't have any memory. The person do not have any memory. And the person uh, at each step, he can either go in the up direction or down direction or left or right. And these four are equally probable. As I mentioned, the person do not have any history. For example, if the person has made uh, five moves uh, all in the right direction previously, that does not uh, stop him from making another move in the right direction, right? So the what the person did in the past has no influence on the future, okay? The person has no memory, no history, okay? And this is a two-dimension version of the problem. We have one dimension, one three-dimension one. And the step length, it don't have to be fixed. It can be continuous um, as well, okay? Now, this process is called Markov chain. Uh, it has mainly uh, the properties which I described, like it has no memory. And what it does next uh, is uh, not influenced by what happened in the past. Okay, now this might look like a, a, a pointless problem, but it has many, many applications uh, in science, engineering, finance, biology, etc. In almost every field, random mark has uh, some sort of applications. For example, in sciences, uh, uh, random mark is used to study how the gas, uh, how the molecules move in gases and liquids. In finance, uh, uh, these models are used to study how the stock price uh, varies with the time. Okay, And also in computer science, the random walks are used to measure the size of the web. Uh, uh, in health sciences, they, ca they can be used to study the uh, spread of the disease. Okay, So coming to this video, we will simulate a two-dimension random walk uh, for simplicity. We start, uh, somebody starting at origin, for example, this is origin. So the person will start from here and uh, will make the person take some n number of steps. And each step, uh, the person will choose one of the directions randomly, all equal probability, and make a move, right? And then, again, make one more move, independent of what happened in the previous step, and it goes on like that, right? So we'll simulate this process and we'll see how the output look like. Now we are not going to ask any probability question. Uh, there, are, there are, we can ask many number of questions, but we will just simulate the walk and we'll see what sort of uh, questions we can ask at the end, okay? Uh, let's look at the code. Now, here we have a new library, which we have not used before. So matplotlib, it has this function animation uh, method uh, using which we can create uh, animations so we when we when we do the plotting we can create them as animations uh, which we will see uh, in a minute okay uh, now this has uh, we have seen this before uh, from my python display we can have h display html etc etc right so let's write a function uh, to simulate the process okay so the function simply takes uh, how many number of steps and we are assuming the person always start at the coordinate 0, 0, okay? And here we are looping uh, n number of steps, right? And these ones, x list and y list, we are going to track uh, the person movement so that we can visualize at the end of the simulation, right? Now, as we were discussing, the person has four choices, right? Uh, whether we can call it up, right, down, left, or we can call it north, east, south, west, etc. Right. So by using the random choice function, uh, at every step we are picking one of these directions with equal probability. Okay, with equal probability. That's important. And then uh, let's assume the step length is also one. Okay. So if uh, the chosen direction happen to be let's say north, uh, that means the person is going in the up direction. Right. So only the y coordinate will change. So from the current position, we update the y coordinate by one. The x coordinate remain the same, right? So as you saw here, when a person start from here, 
let's say if you go in the up direction only the y coordinate changes the x coordinate remain the same uh, similarly if he goes to the bottom again the y coordinate changes by negative 1 whereas the x coordinate will still remain the same and similarly x coordinate will change if the person move either uh, left or right right and then y coordinate does not change okay so if the chosen step is north or up we are increasing y coordinate by 1 and in the opposite direction if the chosen step is south which is down uh, we are uh, reducing the y coordinate uh, by 1 so delta uh, or the step length is 1 here right and similarly if it's east uh, which is right uh, so the person is move, moved at that point uh, to the right so the x coordinate increased uh, by 1 and the fourth option uh, if it's to the left x coordinate reduces by 1 okay so for every step we have computed the updated coordinates right and then these updated coordinates uh, at time let's say t plus 1 we have uh, stored them in this list and finally we are returning these two lists xl and yl right so if the person has taken 100 steps uh, which means the these two lists each will contain uh, 100 values okay now this is one way to simulate the process and uh, let's look at another uh, process because this is so simple there are many number of ways we can do it right so this part is same uh, again the person starting from x uh, x and y zero zero uh, these ones to keep track of the movement and again we are simulating for end step so this time instead of randomly selecting a string and updating the coordinates here we are having the delta i mean the code the delta x and delta y's right for example the person uh, might move right if he is moving in the right uh, right direction uh, sorry up direction the x coordinate will remain the same the y coordinate will increase by one right so th this represent uh, moving in the up direction whereas this represent moving in the down direction because there is no change in the x coordinate a y coordinate changes by negative one right this means uh, it's the movement in the down direction whereas this one uh, it's x is equal to one which means the person is moving in the right direction and y coordinate does not change and finally this one uh, it's a movement in the left direction that's why it is minus one and no movement in the y direction right so instead of randomly selecting a direction and then making the uh, delta or the update here we are doing both simultaneously right so here we are uh, directly sampling uh, the movement and then we simply update update both x and y coordinate so for each step again uh, as you can see in all these four options there is one zero right so either x coordinate or y coordinate gets updated and we are finally uh, updating the lists to keep track of so first let's simulate uh, this for just 100 steps okay now we call the function now either we can call uh, this random walk 2 or random walk both will uh, give uh, same results right and then uh, we have these two lists now let's plot these lists uh, to see uh, how the person has moved okay now the final coordinate will be the last element in this x list and y list right so that would be i mean in this case it happened to be minus 3 minus 7 so the person has started at 0 0 so which is this coordinate he has started at 0 0 and then ended up at minus 3 which is this one and minus 7 okay so the person ended up uh, here so he went uh, here came back came back so this is probably the 98th 99th step and this one is 100th step where uh, he finally is at minus uh, 3 minus 7 minus 3 minus 7 okay so this is just plotting uh, all we are doing is uh, uh, we are just taking the elements from the list xl and yl we are doing the plots and uh, just set up some bounds uh, uh, in this case this 10 so we are plotting this canvas between minus 10 to plus 10 minus 10 to plus 10 okay uh, that's pretty much it and then we are doing the grid all right now let's do the animation part right so that we can actually uh, visually see how the person has moved now for that all we are doing is uh, so the animation is simply 
uh, it's a collection of frames, right? I mean, any video we see, it's a collection of images, right? Now, in each image or plot, what we are going to do is, so the first plot going to contain the data from first moment only. The second plot, it contain the data of both the first and the second one. And similarly, the let's say the 50th uh, frame in the animation contains the first 50 frames uh, movement or the data, right? So at every frame, we are including one more step and we are doing the replotting. Because we are creating animation using all these frames, it looks smooth as if it is a video, okay? So here all we are doing is, uh, so you we have this variable called i. Now when we run it first time, i is equal to let's say one. So here we have creating a two new lists, right? XL2, YL2. So this list will contain uh, only the first two elements, right? So only the first two tips. For example, the person started here. So he make one move here and the second move here. So when we call this function second time, XL2 and YL2 each contain only two values, right? So here we are clearing the plot which, which was plotted previously uh, and then we are making a plot, right? So when we call this function the second time uh, in this loop, only from here to here that portion uh, gets plotted, right? And then we again call the function. This time I value will be three. So XL2 and YL2 will contain three elements. So maybe from here to here and maybe let's say the person has moved uh, down at this point, right? So these three segments get plotted, right? So that way we are generating uh, multiple frames uh, continuously and we are making it that into an animation. Now this is the same stuff. Here I'm just plotting uh, uh, the frame number and the location, right? So we use this animate function from matplotlib. Uh, we simply pass this figure and then this is the function which we have created animate uh, where we have the definition, uh, the coordinates, what to plot, etc. And then this one is the number of steps which is equal to the number of frames. And this one, uh, the intervals, it will determine how fast uh, the frame should move, right? Essentially, this will determine the length of the animation, right? The higher the value, uh, uh, the longer uh, the video and also, for moving from one frame to another frame, uh, the time will increase. Now, this repeat means it simply loop uh, uh, after uh, completing uh, all the frames, right? And then finally, if you want to show the uh, video uh, in HTML, I mean, uh, the Jupyter Notebook, we use this function, okay? So this is how it looks like. Okay, so the person has started here. Step one, he moved in this direction. Step two here, uh, to the left. And then step three, the person moved to the bottom. Step four, the person moved to the left, right? So it goes like this. So here you can see the step number and the latest coordinate, okay? So this is how the person uh, is moving in time. All right, so it's 100th step, the person is at minus two and seven. So I guess minus two and seven, which is somewhere here. So he visited this coordinate and, uh, and he went in this direction and he came back, the person is somewhere here like this. Yeah, so you can see it went and came back like that, right? So let's do one more thing. Uh, let's simulate for a bit more longer uh, to see if it shows interesting pattern. Okay, we simulated for 10,000 steps. This is going to be a static image. Uh, probably this time the bounce will be much larger. So we need to increase the canvas size. So maybe let's increase to 100. The final location it just happened that this is a coincidence uh, right so this is how the person has moved in uh, 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 let me remove this sticks so we don't need these sticks uh, maybe to see let's simulate only 1000 and maybe let's do this 50 so we simulate 1000 steps yeah you can see right so started somewhere here in the middle, zero, zero, and making this uh, random motion. Uh, let's look at the video. It will take some time, but let's regenerate the video. Uh, and also, we need to increase the bounds, uh, maybe 40, 40. So let's increase the bounds to 40. 
Yep. So that is generating the animation uh, we will see in a second. Uh, it's, so it probably will take 10 times more. Okay, so while the video is being, uh, animation is being created, um, I guess it's clear, right? So, I mean, there are different versions. You can simulate, the simplest one would be one dimension and fixed step length. We can generate this in three dimension as well. And the step length also don't have to be this discrete. Uh, it can be continuous as well, which is what happens in real world applications. For example, the disease spread, the stock market price, uh, the molecules moving in liquids and gases, etc., uh, etc. Et hmm. It's taking quite long. All right, we'll wait for maybe a few more seconds to see if the video is created. Uh, otherwise, we'll stop it there. Uh, now, let's see what sort of questions we can ask, right? For example, uh, the probabilistic questions. We can ask questions like, uh, hey, what is the maximum distance uh, the person can travel uh, in 100 steps? Right? What is the maximum distance the person will travel within 100 steps? Or maybe uh, what is the probability that the person will travel a distance of X from origin? So that's not the total length the person has traveled. It's the shortest distance, right? So for example, the person started here and maybe ended here. So it's this distance, right? So it's this Euclidean distance. So what is the probability that the person will travel uh, some uh, n units of distance in let's say x number of steps okay so those sorts of uh, probabilistic questions we can ask all right let me do one thing uh, why is it taking this long maybe let me interrupt okay let me reduce the interval so this time it should be faster. Let me see. Let me just make sure the length of Excel. Okay, we have 1000 steps. That looks okay. Do this. Hmm. It's taking quite some time. All right. Uh, well, let's do one thing uh, because it is taking longer. Maybe we'll just uh, simulate uh, for 100 steps, but we'll do a couple of uh, rounds. Okay. So let's do only 100, but let's, uh, let's generate one more time so that we can see the uh, video. Start and run all. <laughs> so this time, uh, this is the path uh, uh, it took. So let me do this. I guess my system is out of memory. That's why it's taking quite long. Uh, but I guess you you understand, right? And in case if you want to see longer animations, we I can create a longer animation and post here. So here you can see, right? So the person started from here somewhere here zero. As you can see, this time uh, the video has moved uh, faster because uh, the time gap between the frames we have reduced by ten times, right? Yeah. So that's how it that's how it looks like. Uh, that's all for today. Thank